Deadlift. Just the name alone sets off the lunk alarm. It's literally picking stuff up and putting it down. But did you know there's several different ways of doing it? That's why we compiled our top 10 favorite variations of the deadlift. Let's get started. Number one on the list is gonna be the conventional deadlift, and it's fighting squats for the top spot king of all exercises. It's really gonna be working that full body and packing on that size and strength. You're pulling the bar from a dead stop position and really only working on the concentric contraction at the top position and letting it drop from there. So what you wanna do is walk up to the bar, bar's gonna be mid foot, hip stance, and you're gonna be grabbing the bar with a shoulder width grip. You want your back neutral, your hip crease is slightly above the knee, your chest is gonna be lifted up and your chin is gonna be neutral. Once you get that down, you can be performing the conventional deadlift perfectly. Number two on the list is gonna be the sumo deadlift. Considered to be slightly more technical than the conventional deadlift, sumos can be a little bit easier on people with poor mobility that have a hard time getting proper position on the conventional deadlift. With a sumo deadlift, you're having a slightly smaller range of motion because of the wider stance. What you gotta remember with this one is get your body behind the bar and your body is gonna be slightly more vertical than a conventional deadlift. So in that way, it's gonna be a little bit easier on the lower back if you have any issues with that. In the sumo position, imagine you're spreading the floor as you lift the weight up and make sure you don't lock the knees before you lock the hips. And as you bring it to the top position, go ahead and push your hips through, get a nice squeeze at the top position but you don't want to hyper extend the lower back. Once you hit that extended position, squeeze the glutes and then lower the weight down from there. Number three on the list is going to be the hex bar or trap bar deadlift. The good thing about this one is it's going to be a lot easier on the lower back due to the torso being slightly more vertical and it's really good for beginners trying to get that proper deadlift form down. So step inside the trap bar and what you want is your toes pointed forward, your knees in line with the toes, you're going to be grabbing the bar and you're going to be externally rotating so that way your inner elbows are pointing forward to get that nice torque in that shoulder joint. You're going to be in a squat down position, you're going to be pushing upwards through the heels, you're going to get the full extension but what you want in this one is don't overly extend because now the bar is not gonna be placed ahead of you and you won't have that to stop your over or hyper extension. So make sure you extend just enough to get a good squeeze and then lower it down to the bottom position. Coming at number four on the list is gonna be the Romanian deadlift or like it's most commonly known, the RDL. And some consider it to be a class of its own due to concentrating on the eccentric contraction and the stretch reflex. But no one can ignore the amazing benefits it has for the posterior chain. The immediate difference with the RDL compared to the conventional deadlifts is that you're actually starting in the erect position. The starting position is going to be upright. You're going to be taking that, you're going to be pushing the bar against yourself, activating the lats, and you're going to be having a small arch in the lower lumbar and locked. You're going to be unlocking the knee so that way it alleviates a little bit of the stretch in the hamstring so you can get a full range of motion. And as you push the bar against the thighs, you're going to be slower lowering down to the bottom position until you get a nice stretch in those hamstrings and then forcefully bring it to the top position. Number five on the list is going to be the Jefferson deadlift. In working in more of an asymmetrical lift, there's not really one perfect way of lifting. You're really going to have to experiment with different positions to find the best leverage for your body type. You're going to straddle the bar and your heels are going to be firmly planted on the ground and you really can experiment with either your right leg forward or your left leg forward depending on which feels more comfortable or switch between the two. This is really a great exercise if anyone has any lower back issues because your upper torso is going to be more vertical. And what you want to do is make sure your knees do not lock out before your hips. Your knees should be moving at the same rate as your hips and you should be locking out at the exact same time. What you don't want is locking your knees out first and then extending up through the hips. Coming in at number six on the list is going to be the block pull or rack pull deadlifts. And this is really working at the upper half position of a conventional deadlift, focusing more on the pulling aspect rather than the pushing aspect. So what you're going to be doing is placing the bar just below the knee so that way the shins are going to be vertical to the floor and you're going to be really focusing on that pulling aspect and extending the hips to the top position and keeping those lats nice and tight throughout the movement until you fully lock out in the top position. Another great thing about the rack pull deadlifts is that if you're having any sticking points in the upper portion of a conventional deadlift, the rack pull can really kind of concentrate on and build strength in that area. So once you go back to the conventional deadlift, you'll feel a little bit stronger in that upper portion of the pull. Number seven on the list is gonna be the single arm or suitcase deadlifts. And what you wanna do is walk up to the bar so that way the bar is either on your right or your left, you're gonna be gripping it right in the middle of the bar with about shoulder width stance. And what you really wanna concentrate on this one is keeping your torso rigid and vertical. 
do not twist with the bar as you're performing this exercise. So you're just gonna be bending down, you're gonna be leveraging in the hips, and you're gonna be extending upwards and get a nice lockout on the top. This is really concentrating on building that core strength. So that's why you don't wanna let the body or the core twist and the spine kind of twist around. Keep it neutral, keep it rigid, and keep that core tight throughout the full range of motion. Coming in at number eight on the list is gonna be the chain deadlifts. And this is really utilizing accommodating resistance and helping build power by increasing your speed and also strength. The good thing about this is as you lift the bar off the ground, as each link in the chain come off the ground, it's increasing the weight. So this is really going to be increasing your energy output, your muscle contraction, and also really helping with that explosive strength. Another great thing about the chain deadlifts is it's really going to help bust through those plateaus and increase your one rep max. Number nine on the list is going to be the lat band pull deadlifts. And very similar to the chain deadlifts is going to be increasing the resistance as you reach the top position. But the difference between this one is it's wanting to pull you forward because the bands are actually located away from you and what that does is going to increase the tension in the lats because you're going to have to engage the lats more to keep the bar against yourself and this is really going to increase the bar control and also have you a better deadlift in general so what you want to do as you get this you're going to be pulling the bar towards the legs increasing the tension in the lats and then perform a standard deadlift get that lockout position keep that nice and tight and then lower it down to the bottom position last on the list and coming in at number 10 is going to be the old class Classic Steve Reeves pinch grip deadlifts. Man, back in the day, our dad used to be a huge fan of Steve Reeves, and that's what got us into bodybuilding. So including this on the list has a special place in our heart. So what this one really does is work on your grip and upper back strength. You're gripping the plates. It looks kind of really weird and goofy, but it's gonna be amazing for that upper back strength and also the grip strength. If you have monkey arms like me, it's gonna be really easy to grab those plates, but if you have a little bit smaller arms, just don't feel like you need to use the Olympic size bar. Just grab a smaller bar, and what you're doing is really working in the kind of same positioning and movement as a standard deadlift, but of course now, you're grabbing the plates rather than just the bar ahead of you. Make sure your spine is neutral, your chin is neutral, and you're just gonna be getting that full extension in the top position, and then lower it down here. Don't feel like you have to go too heavy in this exercise, because it's really just working on the endurance of the upper back and grip so take a little bit lighter get that nice comfort form and you're good to go pinch grip deadlifts thank you steve reeves and diy dude so there you have it dudes and girls our top 10 favorite deadlift variations so the next time you go in the gym and a douche bra asks you do you even deadlift bra you can say yeah and i know 10 different ways of doing it so I just want to say a big thank you for voting on this episode. You made it possible. And also make sure you vote on the next episode so that way we know what you want to see next. And as always, stay buff. Yeah. And deadlift like a true buff dude.